Anyone with a passing interest in films has one or more that they love with all their heart and everyone else seems to hate. Whether it's some enthusiastic freaks on Twitter who'll defend Batman vs Superman to people who really don't care, this person I made up who sees the deeper meaning in the Smosh movie, or someone who thinks the host is really funny. The films might change, but at different times in our lives we are one or all of these people. I have a number of these films, but today I'm going to defend my love for one made by Oliver Stone. My son, ask for thyself another kingdom, for that which I leave is too small for thee. Now, when he's not making savages or some nonsense about American football, I'll generally defend Oliver Stone's films. Sure, his political stuff needs to be taken with a grain of salt or antipsychotics, but he's one of cinema's great experimental filmmakers. And today I'm defending his 2003 epic Alexander, because seemingly no one else will. I won't be defending all of it though, stuff like Alexander and Hephaestus and not having a sex scene is beyond ridiculous. One of the things that people seem to have an issue with is the use of accents. As far as I'm concerned, it's a stroke of genius. They were used as shorthand to help the audience grasp the politics as quickly as possible. The Greeks have BBC English accents, the Macedonians Irish, Scottish and Welsh accents. Earthier, less refined, because these were the grandchildren of goat herders from the edge of Greece who had only recently taken control. This actually isn't the first historical film to use atypical accents like this. The Last Temptation of Christ had the Romans with English accents and the Hebrews with American. Now, if knowing why the accents were used in this way you still find them silly, then ask yourself, why does an Irish ancient Greek sound any sillier than an English accented Roman? Even Angelina Jolie's accent as Olympias makes sense when you think about it. She was an outsider, she had a funny accent. I'm not defending her choice of accent per se, just that her having one made sense. Honestly, they should probably have just had her use her natural accent. To sum up, the accents were used as shorthand for the audience. Alexander's life, though short, was huge, and shortcuts like that were useful. But that's not the main thrust of the video, that's the religious and cultural referencing. You might not have realised this, but due to most films coming from places with some degree of Christian culture, films tend to be infused with some degree of Christian cultural shorthand. The most obvious example is somebody who sacrificed himself for the greater good having their arms out like Christ on the cross. Well, Alexander does that for Hellenistic references. At the start of the film, Stone as King Philip take young Prince Alexander into the catacombs beneath the palace to discuss the heroes of myth. Prometheus, Achilles, and more. And then in the film, Alexander's life parallels him directly in small parts, akin to a hero in the Christ pose. He echoes everyone from Heracles to Oedipus over the course of the film. This film was designed in such a way that if an ancient Greek came to life and could somehow understand English, they could watch it and hopefully get it on a cultural level that we just don't share. Most historical films show the time and place through the prism of the modern day. Troy was released around the same time as Alexander and has been completely purged of all the cultural alienness of the story. Achilles is straight, Patroclus is his cousin, it's a modern story wearing the clothes of an ancient one. Alexander doesn't sift through the story to remove the things that modern audiences would find ridiculous, like Olympias and her omens, or Alexander taming his horse, or the Greeks' bizarre racism against everyone else, or countless little things, like Alexander's haircut. Alexander himself is not a traditional film epic hero. He's petulant, he's emotional, he's a child dragging an empire through the force of his personality. He's Kylo Ren if Kylo Ren was the guy in charge. If you placed Alexander III of Macedon into another film, he would likely be the villain because our concept of heroism is totally different from the ancient Greeks. To them, being a hero wasn't saving people, stopping injustice, or even necessarily doing good. It was about living larger than normal people, feeling more, suffering and achieving the impossible. And if ordinary people are crushed by the quest, then so be it. Alexander based himself on the ancient Greek heroes, a group of people who were unrepentantly non-heroic by our standards. Even the most famous of them, Heracles. Hercules murdered his whole family in a fit of madness. Hell, he flat out compares himself in Hephaestion to Achilles and Patroclus. Did Patroclus stand Achilles when they stood side by side at the siege of Troy? Patroclus died first. Alexander cries, he puts whole cities to the sword, he rages, rapes, and murders. He names over a dozen cities after himself, and the film attempts to get this megalomaniacal personality across, along with the culture that admired it. Common complaints about the over-the-top acting in the film can also be countered by looking at the film as culturally ancient Greek. 
The characters in the film are emotional. They scream at each other because characters in ancient Greek works weren't usually the cool Stoics like heroes of today's films. People who have two emotions, nothing and rage. This is a film that depicts its story as accurately as it can in the broader cultural world that it happened in, warts and all. The film even tries, though it doesn't quite succeed in portraying the Greeks' attitude to sexuality. Part of the reason this film is so disliked is that it's not been made for us. It's been made for long-dead members of a culture that has ceased to be. We're used to epics more like Troy or Gladiator than this, epics that alter the past to fit the present, rather than this, which attempts to recreate a culture in all its shades. The past is another country and Alexander makes you bring your passport. It even uses similar techniques in his battle scenes as Stone used in his Vietnam War films, because this is a modern film. It's just modern for a long time past. Even the infamous war scene where everything is washed in pink can be seen through the lens I'm describing. The ancient Greek's visual style was, by our standards, incredibly gaudy. If anything, this use of colour probably should have happened more often. It being made for ancient Greeks with the cultural wall between us and the film and people expecting anything like a traditional epic, like Troy or even Spartacus, one that changes the story to fit our present tastes, we're always bound to have an issue with it. Remember the parts where Queen Olympias would name drop Alexander like he was already an infamous historical figure? Never will there be an Alexander like you, Alexander the Great. Well, the reasons for this are twofold. One, she was that kind of megalomaniac when it came to her son. She believed he was literally the son of Zeus, and not only was he destined for greatness, but he was already great. In most films, the insane drive he got from his mother doing stuff like that would be dropped or shunted over to something a little more easily understood in our context, such as making the Persians, Bactrians, and Indians evil and therefore justifying Alexander's conquests. But this film doesn't. But our fictional ancient Greek, who came back to life and somehow knew English, could watch this and understand not only that his mother helped drive him, but exactly why because he's the son of Zeus, equal to Heracles, and like Heracles, he'll do amazing things and cause untold pain. He'd also get that her words are often double-edged, because he'd know that Alexander means defender of men. So she's also talking about his prowess as a warrior. Alexander the Great. That's this film in a nutshell. It's often ridiculous by modern taste, but done in such a way that ancient Greeks would hopefully get deeper meaning from it. It goes further than just culture, though. I think the Greek gods literally exist in the world of the film. Present, but usually unseen. Like the Christian god in many other films. The main evidence of this is the eagle at Galgamela watching over the battle, beckoning Alexander to follow him to Darius, then feasting on the slain and finally appearing fully to Alexander as he dies. Yeah, in this interpretation of the film, Alexander is definitely the biological son of Zeus. But to quote that great epic, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Philip is his daddy. Anyway, Zeus shapeshifts so it could just be him, or more likely it's his messenger and Zeus is using it to watch over his son, in whom he is well pleased. Zeus is connected with the eagles and even used one to tear the liver from Prometheus, an act that the film directly compares to the aftermath of Galgamela. The way to view this film is not as an epic or even a historical, but a film from a foreign culture that you don't know in any great detail, unless you're into history. I'm not saying the film's amazingly accurate, it's clearly not, anyone who's read much in the life of Alexander can point out the flaws, but it's a hell of a lot more accurate than most historical films. And that's a big part of why people didn't connect with it. It's too foreign. Any film can get the chain of events accurate. The figure was born, they did stuff, and then they died. But few try to get across the culture, the mindset, the feel of the time. Lots of films bring the past to life, still more try to turn the past into a mirror of the present, but Alexander tries to bring us to the past. I'm not saying that Oliver Stone intended all this, in fact, I don't think I've seen him say anything like it, but this is how I see the film. An attempt to give us an authentic glimpse into a rich foreign culture. Now, rewatch Alexander with this idea in your head and see if you end up liking the film more. Let me know in the comments. And if you want to know what this would have been like as a more traditional epic that changes the story to fit the modern day, then watch Alexander the Great starring Richard Burton, which is crap. Yeah,